I'm Patrick Bailey with IQist.com. Today is March 29th, 2020, and in this video I'll be going over the Prusa Face Shield RC3 and the new stackable version so you can set up prints overnight and get eight shields uh, versus just two. Doctors need face shields, and anyone with 3D printer can help out and help out now. You do not need to make the clear see-through part, the face actual face shield. Others are working on that, and you do not need to make the elastic strap that holds it in the back. Others are working on that. What they need right now is for people with 3D printers to print out the face shield part. Uh, now, let me go over some of the current information. There are several designed face shields out there right now, but the Prusa one has the most traction and approval by hospitals and is the one we are using here in Colorado. I happen to live in Colorado, and that's the one that's approved here. So let me go through some sites right here now to help everyone out, and I'll put these in the show notes. So here is... Uh, the Prusa research site, Prusa Prints, where they have all the prints up right now, so you can go there. Uh, here's a link for the single shield, and also here is a link for, they have a new version where they stack them so you can print several at a time. Um, now for you Colorado folks who want to go help out, there's a website here called makeforcovid.co. You can go here, sign up, join the chat room, and we're, I'm in there right now, other people are in there now, chatting back and forth on how to organize and help Colorado. Uh, also, if you go over here, for Colorado people, here is the current designs they're using, and they're using uh, the Prusa head, the Prusa, and they're going for the RC3, but they will accept the RC2 and RC1, but right now, do the latest. Uh, so this is what they're requesting. Also, there's an SOP in here, Standard Operating Procedure, on how to do this. You know, how do you wash your hands, put a face mask on, and clear plastic, and where do you put it? Everything's not exactly worked out right now on how to pick it up, but they are working on that right now. Um, also over here, someone here locally did a video, and you can watch this on the proper procedure on what to do with face max cleaning and prepping your, your workspace. Um, also very important, they are setting up pick up, they are setting to pick up from your house. The idea I think right now, and don't quote me on this, is a single stream outside of everyone's house. So they're not going to come in your house. I think the idea right now is that you would package these up in the proper way, put them out on your porch, contact them, and they would come send a group over through the neighborhoods to come pick them up so they can centrally uh, deal with them and clean them and get them ready. But don't quote me on that. Now, at, that has not all been determined, but I've talked to some people on the site. They are setting up a new website to control all that. And what I've been told is it will be on make4covid.co. If you go here, eventually that information will be there and you can gather that. From what I gather, you can fill out some, what they're working on is you can probably fill out some information, hit a button and submit a job that they will, they know you've got 20 or something, they'll come pick it up at your house. But uh, look for that if you're in Colorado. Um, for the California people, and this is a guy who's probably on the leading edge, uh, there's the opshields.org. Go here if you're in California. This is where they need you. And they are again doing the Prusa RC3. And it's headed up by uh, Repcord. Here's his Twitter site. And I'll put links in the show notes to this as well. Um, now, for uh, the Colorado people, the California people, and everyone else, there is Mask for Docs. I'm also on this right now. And you can go in here, and they have a Slack channel, which you can go join, I think. There it is, Slack, Invite, Mask for Docs. I'm in there right now. Other people are in there right now trying to figure out what they can do. And it's not just to be printing people. It's also people who can sew masks together. Um, and if you, one of the ideas is go figure out what they need locally, what they have approved. If they've approved the Prusa RC3, start printing. And if you have organized locally, try to get at things locally. If you don't have anything lo locally organized, the, uh, <clears throat> rep cord will more than happily take them. In fact, I printed out 12 and sent them there myself because he was the first to mark it, right? So if you look at him and you go down, he should have... Here's the address. So you can send it here. I did another video on that. Print them, prep them, send them here if you have nowhere else to send them. So with that, uh, let me go. So that's all the information. Let me go over the prints. Now for the sake of this video, I'm not going to be doing good procedures. I'm holding this by hand. I'll do a clinic later, but um, follow good procedures where they want, you know, wearing gloves and the mask. The nice thing is now with stackable ones, rather than trying to do them every couple of hours and trying to put gloves on and off, you could do like a batch once, twice a day or something like that. So with these stacked ones. Now, what I would suggest doing is going out on the site on Prusa, downloading all of them. And one thing they have is they have these .3MF files. And the .3MF files also include extra information there so that you can get going. It'll actually configure some other things on speed and different things on that. So use the 3MF ones if you're doing Prusa. Um, so here I can take this. 
Uh, and I did the four, so I just download the four right now. I attended the eight, but I had a problem with this, but I think I can fix that. Uh, the only thing I did is I put this in here. I did change it to my original Prusa i3 MK3 bed just so I could see it better and make myself feel good about it. And it's all fitting on there just fine. And then uh, I, did do a th I went to a 30% infill, which I don't think you need to because it's so small, but that's what they were suggesting originally, so I'm sticking with that. Also, I'm going to three perimeters. They were suggesting it at first, but that might have changed. Also, I'm out of PETG. So I have to go over here and switch this to PLA, otherwise I'm going to have all kinds of problems. So they prefer PETG, but right now, people are running out. If you have PLA, they'll take it. But of course, whatever procedure you have, you're probably going to mark that it's PLA, so they'll know what they have. Okay, so with that, we're going to, I'll slice it here. Now what I would suggest, if you haven't done these yet, I would suggest getting the one version, print out just one, and then print out two and then start printing out the stacks. So you get to have a look, then print out four, a stack of four and make sure you're good. And then print out a stack of eight and make sure you're good. Uh, so what it's doing here, which is really cool, uh, if I go down to the level where they're meeting, now it might be really hard to see, I have to zoom in here. There are little dots everywhere. So on this one level, just a little dot, and then it formed to the layer above it, which might not be the most beautiful, but it looks like it's working very well. So there's little support dots for that one layer, and a layer below it, and a layer above it, hook on, and life is good. And that way they should be easy to tear off. Now, one thing I would suggest, even though they're trying, people have different ways on, know your printer. For me in Colorado, I've had problems sometimes keeping things attached. Some people suggested just using isopropyl alcohol, perfectly cleaning things all the time. I did that this morning. It did not work for me well. So I went back to my old tried and true method, which is using a glue stick. So I glue stick the heck out of thing. Uh, I did not do that on the eight version. I had some issues. I did it on the four version earlier. No issues at all. So I don't think I'll have any issues on the eight. Uh, so go with what will make you successful. So with that, let me go over the numbers. So to print out a single one by itself, it took two hours and 58 minutes. It took 2.8 cents of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.054 kilograms, which at $20 per kilogram comes out to $1.08 worth of material. And in total, it takes $1.11 worth of material and energy to print this out. And out of a roll, I should probably get about 18 per kilogram out of this. So that's pretty good. Now, moving on, uh, I did try to do the 8 buy, and I had a failure last night. I will try to do some other ones today. Uh, tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow, and if I do that, I might make another video just showing how it worked well. I hope. I don't think I don't think there'll be any issue. Uh, I just had issues because I, did, I had issues where I didn't attach it to the bed very well. Uh, but now on the four time four by now the four by, uh, it took. Okay, here's the numbers. It took six hours and ten minutes to print. It took five point eight cents of electricity, and it weighs 0.186 kilograms for all four. And at twenty dollars per kilogram, that comes out to three dollars and seventy two cents. So the total cost to print four of those was $3.78, which comes out to $0.95 cents per mass, so a little cheaper. Uh, also, uh, you should get five runs per one kilogram roll, so you should get a, a total of 20 mass per this. So I think there's actually a little bit less mass in this design, or I don't know if I noticed that, but it seems to be going a little faster. Um, so I, if you watch some of the videos, I did have some of the... There are some supports for the little pegs going up, and I did have a couple of those break off. Through the through the video, but it did this did still it did still successfully make the peg, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. At least I didn't have to worry about it. Um, so that's it. Get printing. We need to protect our frontline workers as best we can. Also, keep checking for updates. By the time you watch this, there should there may be a Prusa RC four or a RC five. Also, make sure it's what your doctors have approved. What do they want right now? Oh, and here at the end, just a quick video of me showing it, taking it apart, taking it off the plate and taking it apart, which it turns out it's pretty easy to take apart. Okay, I got my protective gear on. So now I'm going to take this and just see how easy it is to take this apart. I haven't tried yet. Well, I did try with the other one that failed. It seemed pretty easy. Of course, the two bottom parts are easy. Now these, we have these extra pieces to support it, right? And they came off. A couple of them came off during the print, but everything seems okay. And now, huh, just that easy.
Super easy. Okay. That's it. Easy peasy.